Hello, and welcome back to my channel. Last week's episode closed us out from the Untold Stories Card War series. Yeah, I know. And this week, I am excited to share with you a piece that I created just for you to give you some thoughts about creating a studio within your home. Ten things you should know before starting an art studio in your home. The first one being crowded space. Overcrowded space. The amount of individual art pieces that you create can turn into an overcrowded workspace art studio creating so much that you have to have find homes within the area that you have created as your home studio the second one being mess messes the amount of messes that you will make in your space is real. Especially if you have carpet and you paint with acrylic. The third one being temperature. Depending on where your studio is located in your home, Temperature within the home could be drastic. Uh, for instance, like my studio is upstairs and in the hot months and in the cold months, like in the hot months, we don't keep it cool enough up here. And in the cold months, we don't keep it warm enough. And so sometimes I have trouble with my paints drying out. Um, or like my water evaporating out of like where I keep my brushes and what have you. So that's something to think about is the temperature of your space if you have a home studio. Number four is guest. If your studio is messy and you have guests over to your home, how will you handle that? Meaning if you don't have a door to your studio or a curtain of some nature where you could close things off because if you have guests over and you don't quite have time to pick your space up or if you're one of those people who don't pick up in between creating then your studio is going to be messy when you have guests over to your home and I know oftentimes when we are creating it is hard to go behind ourselves and pick up and clean everything because we're in the process of creating something and it may get to the point that we aren't quite ready to put all those supplies up because we need to rest in our creative process and want to come back, you know, say the next day and look at things and add things or something else in our life may be pulling us away and we can't quite uh, finish creating and, you know, sometimes it takes months to get a project uh, finished. But just think about if you do have a home studio of the potential of how messy it could be and your guests come by and can see. Luckily, I have a door on my studio that if I have to, I can close the door and I have in the past, but for the most part, I try to get it picked up before people do come over. Now, don't think I have never had it to where it's not a mess before someone comes over because it does happen, so. The fifth thing would be walk-ins. Family members will walk in in the midst of you creating. I promise you it will happen. Just know that if you are doing this and you are in the process of filming a video, there will be talking included in your video and you will have to plan accordingly to edit that out. So just remember walk-ins, whether it be family or a guest that comes by the house, um, that you could potentially have interruptions in your home studio when you didn't plan for them.
number six, kids. If you have kids and say they're home for the summer and you are trying to create and they're wanting to go swimming or, you know, pull out the Legos or whatever and they need your um, undivided attention to help them with the process that they're wanting to have fun and create themselves, you could have those interruptions. But more than anything, kids uh, wanting to come in your space and into your studio and you know some people may absolutely want that off limits and not have their kids involved i always open my studio up for my children to they had the freedom and still have the freedom the ages that they are to come in my space and create or use my supplies now when they were younger i was a little weary about them using some of my supplies but uh, the older I've gotten, I've, I've aged out of that. And if they came to me right now and said, Mom, I need some paintbrushes, some paper or canvas or whatever, I, I'll tell them, Honey, well, here's it at. Here it is, and you, you have at it. But just remember, if you do have a home art studio, the chances of your kids wanting to come in and create, they're either going to want to do it or they're not going to want to. So be prepared if they do how will you handle that? And if they don't, don't let it hurt your feelings because I actually, when my kids were growing up, the reason I created a home studio is because I was a homemaker at home raising my children and my family. And I wanted a space where I could have something else for us to do, an outlet. One of my kids thrived in the studio and wanted to create and what have you. My other one, meh, absolutely didn't want anything to do with it. So that is something to think about. Number seven, finances. So this finances is something else to think about. If you are considering having a home studio, you could think about the fact that you're not having to pay for a lease outside the home. You already have your space within your home, whether your home is paid for or are you paying your own home mortgage? But you, you know, you will be home more and you will use lights and, you know, air and heat and stuff like that. And that will draw in more of a higher electrical bill, but still you're not paying for that lease outside the home. So finances. Number eight is discard. Discard things in your studio uh, yearly that you aren't using because being an art studio and within your home and it gets out of control, it's going to feel like a bogging down area of your home. So I would encourage yearly to go through the things in your studio and discard things that you are no longer using or supplies that you tried and you just aren't comfortable with or just don't see any need or didn't care for and have a true strong feeling that you're never going to use them again. Discard things within your studio to keep it clutter free and open. That way you have a peaceful mind. And I'll give you a little hint. I'm in the process of about to discard some stuff because my studio is getting a little overcrowded. Number nine is freedom. freedom. You have the freedom in your home art studio to rearrange or relocate or hang things how you want them on a wall versus if you have a studio outside the home and you release in the place, there may be restrictions about what you can and can't do in there. So the total freedom of having it within your home and it's yours. So basically you can do what you want. Number 10 is must. A must. A mirror is a must in your art studio, but a clock is not. I also have a bonus for I you. I have a bonus for you. Household duties will call your name more frequently when you have an art studio within your home. Meaning, go to the dishes, go do the laundry, do something the kids need, go water the garden, start cooking a meal for dinner. But also a little side bonus is you have your kitchen space within your home for your lunches or your breakfast. 
bonus number two. <laughs> One more bonus for you if you're doing a home studio is the loss of space within your home. Now, if you have an abundance amount of space within your home and losing one room is not a problem, then that would be a-okay. But if you're having to give up a room and don't have a spare room when you need a spare room, that's something to think about. I hope you found these 10 things helpful before starting an art studio in your home. I don't think so. All right. Well, I'll talk to y'all later. All right. Bye-bye. It's a must. Have a good week, and I will see you next Monday. Bye-bye. What time did he get the trash out? All right, and y'all's doctor's appointment's tomorrow. Yeah, she had to go on into work. <laughs>